All right, welcome back. Um, Maureen had asked a question about how it doesn't unravel, so I figured I would show you how I start off and a little bit of that part of it. So the first piece is you can notice that while I'm weaving in green, there's these bits of blue and purple. Those are um, basically scrap pieces that are put in to help spread the warp and, and, es uh, and establish kind of a, a base to weave off of. And they help to prevent anything from going anywhere with the actual weaving. But while I'm weaving, really the reason it doesn't unravel is the tension that it's held under. It's um, enough to stop it. And there's enough of a tail that it's not, that the what does pull isn't enough to pull it out. Because this is a scarf and isn't going to be a piece of fabric that I cut up and therefore whether the there's a couple of loose ones at the very end probably doesn't matter. What I do to it is I hem stitch it and I suppose theoretically I could do that with a piece of fabric at some point. Um, so what that involves is leaving a really long tail at either end and finishing the edge uh, by hand. So we're going to do the front end and most of the t the last couple times when I've done it, I've done the hem stitching on this side after I've finished. So the only difference is it's not under tension. It still works though. Um, so basically go around and we got to make sure that this guy's not part of our, all right, so let's Hopefully, okay. I don't want that tied up in there, so I'm just gonna get rid of him. There we go. So you go around and then around again and up a couple of threads, two, three threads, into the weave. So that then anchors what's going around here up a little higher. And then do the same thing and I'm do I have I do it roughly four stitches together or four threads together and put three threads in This helps to create, uh, not only holds it in because now everything's kind of, uh, everything's trapped, nothing's gonna unravel, but it also, for a scarf, helps to, you know, just create a nice finished edge What uh, for any tassels, because they look really cool when they're kind of bound up in little sections. be able to see it a little better. So under th four or so of the threads, pull them together up into like the third or fourth row there. Pull that. And then again another kind of four stitches. trying not to split any threads. The idea is to go in, basically work with the holes that are there, uh, the space in the, in between the threads and in between in the weaving. Sometimes easier said than done. You can hear the, the clicking sound is just the charms on my bracelet hitting the wood. It doesn't 
nothing on the loom itself is actually moving, so there's nothing for it to, no noises for it to be making. Doing this um, on both ends prevents it from unraveling and while weaving throughout the, the the length of the fabric as I'm changing colors would be really the only other time there would be a real risk of unraveling and what we do with that is just make sure to overlap so if I was when it comes time to change colors the end basically still gets moved in so that it's part way through maybe wherever it is that it ends and pulled out a little bit and then woven in and then without changing the shed the next piece goes in and they usually try and overlap for a little while um, and that anchors them in and prevents either one of those ends from unraveling because there's uh, lots of um, overlap for them. If I was going to cut this up and sew with it, uh, I'd probably just machine finish the edges to keep them from unraveling. And the rather than rather than do this, uh, because any pieces that I cut uh, would be would be finished that way. And if I wasn't going to use the fabric right away and was concerned that there might be some unraveling that would happen before I got to use it. Uh, machine finishing the edges would, would be faster and, and just easier to do. One of the other questions I had was around the weight of fabric that this makes. So this is, if I'm thinking about you know common commercial fabrics, it would be heavier than most clothing related fabrics maybe a blanket weight kind of um, in terms of how heavy it is and how thick it is but if I'm thinking of other kind of hand um, made fabric weights like a knitted fabric weights this would be thinner than you would get from knitting up worsted. Which would be your kind of typical sort of most common wool weight if you're looking at like a Briggs and Little or something like that. Which would be the ubiquitous uh, worsted weight yarn in, in this part of the world. other piece that I had made, the original piece with the cotton, would be kind of tablecloth, or not tablecloth, uh, placemat kind of weight. It was a pretty heavy, thick material. times here at the end to finish it and 
then I usually just kind of take a little off and kind of leave it. If the colors work, like on the pink one, I was able to kind of leave it in and make it almost part, part of the fringe, but otherwise probably with this one it'll just end up being trimmed off at the end. But what I'll do is I'll move this over here and give you kind of a closer look. So it's kind of messy. I'm not particularly good at it yet. and um, But that's this edge here with this piece is how it looks uh, on this side. And that's what I do to keep it from unraveling. So I hope that answers that question.